Hello, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, your guide through the ARRL license manuals. The videos in this course follow the manuals section for section. You can get the ARRL license manuals from the source listed below the video. After you watch the video, dig into the corresponding section of the book, study the associated questions, and then come back for the next video. That's the whole point of ham radio, isn't it? To get on the air, to make contacts, to talk with people. There's so many different ways of doing it. We're just going to demonstrate here uh, some two ways on two meters. Uh, the first will be uh, simplex, which is direct between myself and another ham, a friend of mine, Randy Cassingham, K0RCC. And then we're going to use a repeater uh, the repeater in Montrose, and you'll see differences. The first thing about making contacts is to listen. Make sure you're not jumping in on top of somebody else, and that uh, advice pertains to all frequencies, all bands, all modes. Uh, no one has a right to any specific frequency, and the person who has it at the moment is the one who is using it, and if that doesn't work for you, you'll need to find another frequency. Fortunately, with our radios, there are lots of other frequencies that you can find. When you do transmit, particularly on FM, make sure that you leave a pause between your transmissions. That way, somebody can jump into the middle. They may have priority traffic. Uh, I have had experiences where I have had emergency traffic and couldn't get into a repeater because two people were talking to each other and they were coming right in on top of each other and I was unable to get the signal in uh, edgewise. Uh, let's not do that. Uh, on repeaters there's often a little courtesy beep and it pays to wait a moment. Even on HF this is something that you do when the other guy signs wait a second and if somebody wants to jump in they'll jump in right then. So Without any further ado, let's go to the simplex contact and then the repeater contact and you'll see what they actually look like. We're sitting here in the ham shack hoping to demonstrate a simplex conversation on two meters. This is the microphone, the radio's up here, connected to 12 volts, putting out 50 watts to a disco antenna. High on the roof, about 30 feet in the air. A disc cone at this frequency acts like a vertical uh, dipole. KE0OG, K0RCC, uh, 58. This is low power, how do you copy? K0RCC, KE0OG. Uh, you're a little bit scratchy. Um, I, I mean, uh, very easily understandable. I'm doing about 50 watts. How am I coming in over there? I have just a little bit of, uh, of uh, static, but hardly any at all. And let me kick up the high power and see how that sounds. I'm only doing about five right now. Okay. And uh, I'll, on the next go around, try going down in power and see how that affects it. Okay. Here's 45 watts, so I should probably clean up the signal a little bit. Well, that's very nice. You're coming in very well over here. Um, shall we try the repeater? Well, let me drop down a little bit. Um, this is high power. This is medium power, which is about 10, I think. A little lower, which is, I think, uh, somewhere below that. Forecast for the Uncompagre Plateau. And uh, the medium and low power, just a tiny bit more white noise on you, but really not much of a change. Okay, here's low power right here. I'd have to look in the manual to see what it is. Yeah, it's just a little bit more, but still fully copyable. Okay, well, I'll just leave it on mid, mid range then. Uh, thanks for the demonstration. I'm, I'm putting this on video, and, and we'll put it up as part of the demonstration on how to make a contact, first on simplex and then on the repeater. All right, well, I'll go over the repeater and wait for you to call. Okay, there are RCC. K0RCC, KE0OG, and I'm on BQSY to 146.79. 
just change the memory frequency here. First we check to see if the repeater is being used and we got the repeater ID. Kilo zero, K zero RCC, KE zero OG, do you copy Randy? Yes sir, you're loud clear. Oh very good, very different audio quality coming through the repeater uh, losing some of the bases uh, more concentrated in the, uh, the higher range. Yeah, this sounds a little flatter to me, but uh, still quite copyable, of course. One of the things I'm showing in the video is to be sure to leave a pause after the last transmission so that somebody can break in and uh, making sure that the repeater is not in use before jumping in. Yep, you're only three miles from here, and it takes 20 miles to get there. <laughs> so, well, thank you very much for the demonstration, Randy. I really appreciate it. I better let you get back to work. I know you've got deadlines. And we'll talk to you soon. K0RCC, KE0OG. Have a good afternoon, K0RCC, clear. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Thanks for following along with the videos and the book. After you've studied this section in the manual and are satisfied you understand the questions and their answers, come back here for the next video. The ARRL is the National Association for Amateur Radio, and I urge you to join, even if you don't have your license yet. That way you get QST, the League's monthly magazine full of articles for beginners and veterans alike, or you can choose On the Air a magazine designed specifically for those new to amateur radio. Until we next meet, 73.